Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd show you how to use AI background replacement in Corel Paint Shop Pro uh, and this is version 2023. Uh, so uh, I got this picture from Pixabay uh, and I picked it because I thought it was a pretty good one to demonstrate background replacement on. Uh, depending on the photograph that you're using with background replacement, uh, sometimes it works better. Uh, or easier than other times and sometimes you have to do a bunch of manual touching up on it so we're going to show you how to do that on this particular photograph so the first thing we do is we go to adjust and uh, we're going down here to artificial intelligence uh, one thing I don't like about this feature in here is it's kind of hidden under this if you didn't know it was right here it would it would take you a while to find it I think and then it's at the bottom of this list and it says AI background replacement. And so it's loading up the uh, replacement uh, program and it's calculating what it thinks is the background right now. And brings this up. It's done a pretty good job here. The nice thing about this picture is this hat here has a pretty smooth edge on it, which is uh, pretty easy to detect. Also, it's a, a dark colored hat uh, which is much different than the lighter colored background. So uh, the AI can figure it out pretty easily. We have some areas right here where it's not as close as it could be or should be to the edge. And then the hair, and this is kind of a common problem. When you have hair or strands of hair coming out into the background, uh, it's hard for it to detect and mask that. And particularly with individual hairs, you end up um, edit just editing those out because uh, it would be too difficult generally to make a mask that would get all of the individual hairs. Uh, when you have more strands of hair, you may be able to include those. Uh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time refining this. I'm gonna just show you some of the tools here. So, um, down in this bottom section, we have things that adjust the width of the border between the, uh, the uh, subject and the background. So, for instance, if she was standing in a forest or something and there was a green background and it kind of matched or, or closely matched the background you were going to put her in or blended well with it, you might actually leave a border around her and then kind of feather it in. Uh, there's also feathering for the edge uh, and smoothing. Um, but what we're, we're more concerned with right now are is the brush mode because that's going to fix up most of the problems on this particular photograph. So we have a couple of brush modes here. One is the refine, which is a really nice mode to be in. Uh, it, it works really well. Uh, Photoshop is a similar brush tool. Uh, and what it does is you'll see when we go along here, we don't have to be so careful with it because we go over an area and it will relook at it. So if we go use that brush to go over these areas where there's a slight gap, it will figure out, oh, I messed up. I need to put uh, fill in this gap here. If you use the plus or the minus, it will e either add to the subject, which takes away from the mask, or it will uh, remove from the subject, which which adds to the mask and that's more manual. So you have to be more careful with that. Right here we have the brush size. So if we wanted to make the brush bigger or smaller, depending on what details we were working in, we could do that as well. So let's use this um, refined brush right here and let's go along this edge like this. And you can see, and I'll have to do, do that again. Let's try it down here. It starts to fill it in. Let's go back down around here. Did a good job there. For some reason, we're having a little bit of problem with this edge right here. See what it does with this. It fixes that up there. Uh, and then if we go around here, Now it may come out down to either deciding to let it take out some of this hair here, like our long hair took some of the hair out, uh, or it might come down to 
um, going in and manually kind of touching things up more. Like we could manually touch this up. You see if we can get one more time on that. Not sure why it's not taking that out, but we would have to go in with a manual brush and blow up and, and go into the detail. We won't take the time to do that today because uh, I'm just showing you the basic tools. Now, another thing is right down along the bottom edge here, you can see some of the mask bled up for some reason. Uh, what we can do there is add to subject with the brush and just go across here and we'll just take that out. But we have to be careful when we get towards any edge because we could we could mess up the edge with that because it will just go over the edge go back here to the uh, um, fine mode go along that edge this is pretty good it's good enough for our demonstration uh, you might also want to go up here it looks like it there the mask was bleeding in a little bit into the hat so you can refine it as much as you want um, and take as much time as you want doing that but this this is pretty good for our part purposes so now we've got the mask set and we're gonna hit next and automatically put in a background right here so there's some backgrounds we can choose from uh, to see uh, if we like them that's a very nice one right there. There's a street. There's a brick wall. So we have lots of, we have, well, we have a few choices here. But we can also do a uh, custom uh, a background. And uh, we do that by uh, browsing here. I'm going to pick this background right here. This is another picture I got off of Pixabay. I thought it was a really nice textured background. I think that looks really nice there. The other thing we can do is we can we can click this to put the original background back in if we want. Or we can click this transparent thing. And so we can use this. And in, in so uh, the background's transparent now on that. If you wanted a, a transparent background to make a uh, transparent uh, PNG for example or if you wanted to just do the transparent background and take and save this and move it into other uh, paint shop uh, pro uh, um, uh, files and uh, put different backgrounds in it uh, let's go back to the custom just by clicking on it and remember the one that we selected or we can go back into browse and reselect it again so that's how you do ai background replacement in corel uh, paint shop pro i'm dean and this has been photo blue and i'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe share and like